Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna give him a low fade all the way around the head, and I'm gonna clean up the beard. And we're gonna leave the top. So in this diagram, I'm just showing you the small area that we have to fade in. I'm not gonna go above this area. So this is gonna be a very condensed fade. So we're not gonna have a lot of room to blend. But it's not gonna be too hard. We're, I'm just gonna walk you through the steps. And we're gonna begin out by making our initial guideline with our trimmers. Okay, now when we take the clipper and the lever is fully open, we're not gonna go up a full inch. Like I said, this is gonna be a condensed fade, so it's almost an inch, but it's a condensed inch. A condensed inch, if, that's, if that makes sense. So this type of fade, it's a lot of flicking with the wrist. It's all about your wrist technique and using the corner of the blade. You'll see me use the corner of the blade a lot in this fade. So what I'm doing now is just attacking that bottom guideline, just getting that line of demarcation out. And notice how he has a high rise already above his ear. So that's why, that's why I didn't take the fade up initially. Excuse me, that's why I didn't take the ball guideline up that high initially. When someone has a natural, a high rise, a naturally high rise above the ear, you don't have to take the guideline up that high. But as you can see, we're just following the same steps like we would any other fade, and you can see the line disappearing. And notice how I'm using the corner of that blade. Okay, so here we take the zero guard with the lever fully open, and we're gonna do most of our blending with just this guard right here. So notice how I'm not really digging. I'm going in a flicking motion because like I said, we don't really have a lot of room to blend. So I'm creating this next guideline with the flicking motion. And as you can see, it's a small guideline as well. It's not a full inch, it's very condensed. Okay, so now we close the lever and we go up just a little bit. So basically what I'm doing right here, I know it may be hard to see, but I'm, at this point, I'm just attacking that bottom line. And it's not gonna fully erase it, but it's gonna remove enough hair for me to start the blending process with this guideline. As you can see, the area is the areas already lightening up. And notice with this fade, I'm gonna leave the C cup dark, or well, the area near his arches, I'm gonna leave that dark. Now here I open up the lever halfway and go up just a little bit more. So I'm trying to go in between that zero open and that zero closed. Like I said, I know it's a tight space, but the key to this fade is that you don't want to go too high. Now, I know a lot of people, they don't like doing these type of fades because you really have to take your time. When you're doing a normal fade and you can stretch the blend, it's a lot easier to fade that way. But when you're doing a condensed blend, you really have to take your time and stay within your guidelines. So you have to stay within those small constraints. And notice how right now I'm just kind of raking out with the, with the lever. I'm really just trying to attack bulk at this point. I don't want to create a guideline, but I'm just trying to lighten up the hair, the hair. And here I just went ahead and took the one and a half guard. And notice how I'm going to flick out. I'm not really going to dig. I'm just going to kind of flick at that weight line. Because he wants to keep the majority of his curls. That's why I'm doing this fade so low. Okay, now here's the, where the majority of the blending is going to take place with the lever fully open. So you're just gonna see me slightly open and close this while I'm doing this process. But this is where the majority of the blending will take place. Like I said, you'll see me adjust the lever multiple times. And really all I'm doing is just trying to re remove those dark spots. 
With fades like this, you have to use a lot of finesse to get the to get the blend to flow smoothly because you don't want it to look like a bowl cut. You don't want it to, to just be bald and then dark. You actually want to see that transition. And that's where the flicking of the wrist and the lever opening and closing, just gradually flicking at the line to just get it to blend smoothly. That's where this comes into play. And you especially have to make sure you blend enough around the arches, around the C cup, whatever you want to call it. You have to make sure that you blend carefully around here because if you turn the head a certain way, it won't look blended. So you have to make sure you turn the head at certain angles to make sure you got a nice clean blend. And here we're just gonna re repeat that exact same process on the back of the head. Like I said, it, this side is, the back of the head where I fade this area is sped up a little bit, but like I said, that's because I did the exact same steps on the left side. So if you get lost following along with this, all you have to do is just rewind back and I'll do the exact same steps on the left side. So the golden roots are fading. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do it to all sides of the head. That's how you get, that's how you get consistent results. You have to do the same thing over and over and over again. But that's also the beauty in barbering. You're doing the same steps, but you have so many different hair textures and the steps are the same, but sometimes you just have to maneuver the clipper a certain way, or you have to be careful with certain hair textures. So that's the beauty in it. You're doing the same thing on a regular basis, but you're just being challenged in different ways. That's what I love about Barker. A lot of people are scared to cut different hair textures or for example, me, I cut more coarse hair and curly hair than I do straight hair, but I still embrace every straight hair client I can get. Or fine hair, a lot of people are scared of fine hair. Me personally, I don't care what type of hair you have. If you sit in my chair, I will cut your hair. That's just the, that's the curiosity in me, the creativeness in me. And you should strive to, you know, don't shy away from any type of hair. You should want to be as versatile as you can. In my opinion, that's what makes a well-rounded barber. You know, anybody can just stay in their comfort zone and do what they're good at, but it takes stepping out of your comfort zone to really see what you're made of. So that's why I challenge all of you guys out there, cut different hair textures. Don't just stick to what you're good at. Try different things. Once you feel like you've mastered coarse hair, move on to curly hair or straight hair. Like I said, just try different things. So now we're moving on to my favorite part of any haircut, and this is the lineup, and this is basically the icing on the cake. It's so crazy to me how a lineup will really just make a haircut come together. Let me know what you guys think in the comment about this fade. Like I said, a lot of people don't like cutting these short blends, but Whatever the client wants, the client gets. So you have to be able to do a number of different type of fades. It's all the same haircut, it's just different variations. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you've gotten value out of this video, subscribe if you're new to this channel. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys on the next video.